Welcome to part 3 of me and the Polish combination lock. If you have watched my previous video, you know that I was not able to decode this lock and I believe the reason is that there is a lot of friction between the outer wheels, also a lot of friction between the inner wheels and play in the connection of the outer to the inner wheels. If a model from made from metal would be different, well, I believe yes, and some of you have also um, suspected that um, uh, a model made from metal would give better feedback. Um, I hope a real model would uh, be easier to operate because this is quite cumbersome to hold the, um, the wheels while turning other wheels. There are some ideas how, we, how this can be improved so that it's easier to set the code. But I think there's too much friction uh, between the wheels anyway. Okay, let's set the right code and open up this lock and look inside. It's 15. I uh, have to turn it um, left way around, otherwise um, the actuator comes down and blocks the movement. So we have to turn it only to the left side. It's 15. Then we have 8. And then we have 12. There is also this other model, um, the improved version with a, a changing diameters, getting smaller towards uh, the front, so then it's also easier to, to set the code. But on this we have to work a little bit. 7 is the next, and then there is 16. So now we should be able to turn this uh, completely. If we have set all the numbers right. 15, no it's 8, sorry it's 8. Ah. 8, 12, yes. So here you can see it now turns completely to the right and then the whole pack can be turned to the right and then the shackle can be pulled out. So here you can see the hole with a locking bar that is controlled by this whole wheel pack. So, ah, no, we have to first uh, get rid of the pins here so that we can remove the back plate. So that's how it looks inside. Um, the code is set correctly and the actuator is turned all the way down. And so we can turn the whole thing and the locking bar can be controlled. Let's remove the, this piece here, the deadbolt, uh, so we can see the actuator here, this black piece here in front of you. Um, I turn it to the middle position. Now I turn the, the knob. We should be able to see it moving up and down. That's how you control the, the movement of the actuator with a bar. I take this piece out, so here we can see the bar. And here we can see the inner wheels. Um, when I turn the whole wheel pack, all the wheels turn at the same time. And if I hold one, I can hopefully manage to turn. Oh. Let's do it like this. Here you can see uh, yeah, the wheels at a different position. We can see the true gate here and the false gates on, our, on all other positions. There is a screw here that is connected to the knob. I can unscrew it. So here the screw comes off. Or, or nut. <laughs> so then I should be able to remove the knob. So that's the thing that um, controls the movement um, of the actuator. And here are the uh, uh, are the outer rings. Okay, and we have oops the whole inner wheel pack. That's how they are. Oh, they turn actually really nice. 
there isn't so much friction at all. Don't know where the friction comes from. Maybe from these... Yeah, there is a lot of friction. Okay, so these are actually pretty smooth from their movement. Wow. Yeah. I could assume that a, um, a model, a prototype made from metal, would operate very, very smoothly. Look at that. Okay, let's pick out one of these inner wheels, one of these code wheels. We can see the true gate and the false gate. Both have the same width. So when you try to test, then you would not feel a difference in the left-right movement. But what I was looking for was a change of resistance. So in a true gate, um, it would look like would look like this, and the inner wheel would be easy to turn in this in this gap here. While on a false gate, it should rub on the on the contact area, but actually there isn't much of uh, of friction here. It's really smooth, so this is an advantage that you don't have a lot of friction here. It's really easy moving left and right. So I was thinking if I can just push hard enough. No, there is actually almost no friction here. So I would have expected this to be harder to, to turn. No. There, I think I think you you are having a, having a hard time to try to um, distinguish between a free play and and this. Maybe with metal it's a different story. I don't know, but here it feels really very similar. Yeah, so that's the whole thing uh, disassembled with the inner wheels, with the actuator, with the outer rings, with the deadbolt, with the screw the knob to turn, uh, to control the, the height of the actuator, the shackle, the back plate and the body. Okay, great job, um, Spignev Olenik. Very well done. It's a very interesting mechanism, very um, easy to manufacture, very secure, I would say. Maybe I will reassemble this lock now and then we will talk about possible applications, advantages and disadvantages of this design. Just hold on. So here are all the parts and before I reassemble the lock I want to quickly show you how the two pieces here come together, the inner and the outer wheel. There is this joint. And here we can also see the play they have, the little movement between the inner and the outer wheel. This is not a disadvantage from a, a usability point of view, however, it makes decoding a little bit more tricky. And when we look at the biggest wheel in comparison, the, the play is much less, almost invisible. <laughs> so this makes it also difficult before because the play is not the same on every wheel. All right, now let's put it together. So let me come to my conclusion about the polish combination lock. It's a very interesting, simple and clever mechanism to make a very secure lock by its design. It's a lot more secure than a usual combination padlock that you can see here on the left. And that's because you can hear, you can pull on the shackle and test um, every position on each wheel under tension and you can feel what's going on in the lock 
and you'll be able to decode this lock. Not the case here. Here you cannot uh, change the code under tension. You have to turn back the knob to change one position, then turn the knob again into the tensioning position and try to feel what's going on. So this is much more cumbersome to, to test and uh, much more time consuming and that's what counts uh, on, on locks to um, enlarge the, the time an attacker would need to open it up. So it's far superior to the usual design of a combination lock like this but I don't think that this is made for the same kind of usage that this that these locks um, are so because this is much uh, bigger in um, in its dimensions so this requires much more space I think a metal um, prototype um, would be smaller but I don't think it would uh, fit into this category I think this kind of lock is much more comparable to a safe lock like this not necessarily a padlock but also uh, a real safe lock on a on a safe and I think these are quite good comparable. I'm not yet sure if the Polish, com Polish combination lock is superior or inferior to a usual um, safe lock of this design but it um, has good chances so to speak. All it depends on how a metal prototype would uh, feel and yeah, how much feedback you would get from a precisely made um, prototype made out of metal. But um, it falls into the same category, I would say, but it has different properties. On the Polish combination lock, you can set the code and you can see all the numbers at the same time. So this makes it easier for you to change the code or to correct the code once uh, if one number is set incorrectly. This is not the case here. Here you have to remember um, or you have to dial in one number and then the number is gone once you turn it uh, to the other directions and if you have messed up with one number the padlock or the, the lock would not open and you have to start over again. Here you can make a correction and then um, you can set the right code. Yeah. On the other hand, this makes it um, bigger. So for every uh, position or for every uh, additional number in your code, you have to add a new ring, which makes it quite long. Not the case here. These locks are very compact and you only have to uh, operate one dial. So this is an advantage of these locks. Um, Speaking of, um, was talking about um, um, competitions where safe locks were cracked open um, by professionals and um, so he was thinking that um, maybe there should be another mechanical safe type lock that is more secure than these locks. So what he thinks uh, the Polish combination padlock can do. So he thinks that this lock cannot be decoded at all. So this is, in his opinion, superior to that. So this would then be a replacement for, for safe locks. But I'm not sure if this uh, amount of highest security is really necessary. So I don't think that uh, safes are really cracked by someone by a thief, uh, thief um, sitting in front of this safe and testing the numbers um, and um, trying to hear what's going on. Maybe brute force um, or uh, violent attacks are more common, I don't know. But um, this would be a potential application for the Polish combination lock on safes. The other possible application that uh, Spigniew has in his mind are residential doors. And here I also have doubts because compare this kind of mechanism and how it operates to a key. Of course, um, many locks can be picked. This lock might be superior 
and cannot be decoded. Um, but it has a lot of disadvantages compared to a key, at least in my opinion. With a key you can share the control over your door by handing someone your key for a limited time and then it, uh, you get it back. For example, if you are on vacation you can give your key to a neighbor and he or she takes care about your pet or your plants or whatever and then it, uh, you, you get back your key and everything is okay. But let's imagine you have a door lock like this and you would uh, tell him or her the combination. Okay, you can set a different code for the time you, you go on vacation. But I, I think changing the code is a little bit cumbersome for the usual user. Um, and this uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to, to control who knows um, who can access your house. You have to provide the code to your children, of course. They need to somehow memorize the code. Maybe they write it down somewhere. And if someone looks at um, the notes, he or she can enter your house without uh, you knowing. That's different to a key. If you lose your key, you can, mm, you can exchange your lock. But if someone uh, steals... Um, your code, you might not recognize this. So this is a little bit trickier than with a usual uh, key controlled lock. And also consider um, how you would operate this lock. Every time you want to open your, your door, um, you have to dial in the code, then you have to open the door, you have to shuffle the, the wheels so that no one can uh, make a picture of the wheels uh, to, to steal your code. And yeah, every time you, you want to lock up your, your, your lock, you have to then enter the, the right code again, lock it up, and yeah, so on and so forth. So this uh, sounds a little bit more uh, cumbersome for me. Maybe this lock is a supplementary lock to your usual key-controlled lock, and you only use it if you are away for a longer period of time. This would then provide additional security and would also give a um, um, possibility to see if someone has tried to access your house because in theory um, a key uh, controlled lock can be picked without leaving any uh, traces if you don't um, use uh, fancy tools to um, uh, microscopes and so on to, to look at some uh, tiny scratches and so on but um, if this lock is 100% pick proof, then you know for sure if someone has entered your lock, he must have destroyed this lock and um, this would then give um, an indication uh, for, um, for someone having broken into your house. So maybe this is good for um, as additional lock as a usual uh, day-by-day -day used lock. I don't think that this is uh, comfortable enough to use. Um, maybe this is a good um, replacement for a lock like this in some applications. Maybe these locks are mm, more secure, I don't know, but for sure they are um, more um, expensive to make. So this is one big advantage of this design. I think the, the parts and the design itself makes this lock very cheap to manufacture compared to a real safe lock and it will provide about the same amount of security. To be proven this with a metal prototype for sure, but uh, let's imagine they are comparable in their security. So then this lock would be much cheaper to manufacture. Well, these are just my thoughts about the Polish combination lock. Um, I was very glad, I am, I am still very glad, that I had the opportunity to play with this lock and uh, to get first-hand experience of it. Yeah, Spigniew Olenik, thank you very much for the opportunity for me to have a play on your lock and I wish you um, luck for the future and all the best. Thank you very much and everybody else, thanks for watching, happy picking and bye-bye. Quick addendum, I know that this video has already become very long, but I have some improvement ideas 
and I do not want to make another video about this lock. So here are my ideas. First and most important, the friction. To reduce the friction between the inner wheels and between the outer wheels is, I think, essential for a very good user experience. Um, I have said that the friction between the inner wheels is uh, very low and it's true, but not for these two wheels. I think there is some some problems here with the, with the tolerances. In any case, I think it's a very good idea to reduce friction as much as possible to um, make an enjoyable user experience. And I think one can sand down the surfaces a little bit. You can see it's not smooth and maybe lubricate the, the parts. And also here on, on this surface area, it would be beneficial. And this is even more true for the outer wheels. This almost feels like sandpaper. Um, this is very rough. So for a good user experience, um, a smooth operation of this lock um, is essential. Next, um, just a little improvement would be to mark the true gate here on these wheels with a different color. So when I reassemble the lock, I have a hard time to align all the wheels correctly. Of course, I can stack them uh, together one by one and align the true gates. That's not a big deal. However, if they turn unintentionally, then I'm looking like this to find the matching true gates. And if the true gate uh, has a different color here on the inside, it would be much easier to align these wheels correctly. Then um, what has been done already with the next prototype is to have these outer wheels in different diameters, so with smaller di diameters towards the end. This allows uh, easier operation. Next would be the actuator, the shape of the actuator. We can see that we have sharp edges here. We know that um, the bar of the actuator goes inside like so. And of course it's rubbing against the surface and this causes wear. And the sharper these edges are, the more wear you have on these um, inner parts of the gates. So I would suggest to make this round to cut away a little bit from this edge here so that it's round. Then there is less wear on the, um, on the inside of these gates. Yeah, then something that um, I've already discussed with Spignev is to make these wheels click. Currently you have the problem that you have to hold one wheel when turning the other wheel. It's easier if the wheels are stacked with different diameters. However, holding the wheel is still necessary. So I would suggest to put a spring-loaded something, a spring-loaded sheet of metal inside. With an, uh, If you think about my finger as an oversized sheet metal that goes in like this, mounted on one side inside the housing, then these wheels would make click, 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 click and would stay at its place when turning the other wheel with the outer wheel. My final remark is about relocking the lock. Here in this reassembled lock the right code is entered. Now I turn the knob to the very right. This lowers the bar and now I can turn the whole thing around so that the shackle is free. Now when I when I relock the lock, I turn the whole pack all the way to the left, but this is too much, so now I cannot lock it back up. And that's because it's overturned, so to speak. So you have to put it into the upright position and then you can turn back the knob and shuffle the wheels to um, 
to lock your lock back up. However, I think this can be improved. Let's do this again. Unlocked and overturned. But I think if we, or if you made the tolerances here a little bit tighter and also this bar a little bit longer and also cut the edges of the of the bar on the actuator and here on this cutout here so then it would be much smoother for the bar here to enter this gap here also if it was tilted a little bit so i think this is um, this is easily possible with some little changes <laughs> with some little changes of making the tolerances tighter on this piece and making the edges round here on the cutout and on the actuator. All right, so now this is really it. I will pack this lock and send it back to you. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching. Happy picking and decoding. Cheers and bye bye.